Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by the most bearish person at the moment in this market, the nightmare of every bull out there. It's, you know it, Inspo Crypto. Yes, at the moment, I, I don't care anymore about the price. They can do what they are doing, just making some bounce. And, you know, in my opinion, the whole thing, what they are just indicating, they are really desperate looking for liquidity just to take an exit. I mean, <laughs> the whole thing, we remember how this year started with Voyager, with, you know, I mean, a lot of crap happening with crypto. And now after FTX collapse, we are talking about Gemini. We are talking about Genesis. We are talking about potentially, potentially a bank run related to Silvergate Capital. I mean, it's serious. Now it's it's getting really serious because we are talking about infrastructure. We are not just talking about, you know, someone that is too greedy, sick, whatever, and did a big mismanagement and burned a lot of capital of retailers. We are talking now about infrastructure platforms where institutional money went in and they are just stopping the withdrawal. Why it's critical and why it's not for retailers? Because in this game, retailers are always the victims. I'm a retailer, you are a retailer, and of course we don't like to be victims. But to be honest, we are the victims. They always try to hunt us and that's the whole game. So it's, we are the collateral just to make it, you know, I mean, they can play as long they have us. That's the whole thing. The problem also retailers will get attracted by the market only if the money stays in this market. But when infrastructure is getting in trouble and institutional start a bank run just to take out their money from the market, then it's over. It's over. I'm not talking about few months. Then it's really, really over. What I said about trust works for retailers, but at the same time for institutional money. We always have gamblers. We will have gamblers on retailers, even those who are, you know, longing Luna when it was crashing, speculating, hey, we will go up, it's just temporary. And of course, we will have smart money, hedge funds and whatever, also doing exactly the same. So we will have some remaining actors that can move the market. But in midterm, this really, really crucial trust between, you know, market actors and the industry, when this is not there anymore, then we are done. We are really, ex I mean, uh, I believe in crypto. I believe in the technology behind. I'm, I, I mean, I know it's the future. I know it. I don't, nobody needs to talk with me about if crypto will succeed or not, because I know it will. But it seems like I shared many times in the past, the H bar professor, uh, I don't know his name right now. In one video with just few seconds, 15, 20 seconds, he explains very well and I agree totally with it. Such 
a new revolution in technology or financial asset, usually you have always the same pattern. It starts, it attracts a lot of money, you will have thousands and thousands of different projects. And then, like the dot-com bubble, you will have a catalyst. It will crash, but it will disappear because of that. The catalyst will just do what it has to do to separate those projects with future, a solid business and use case, and the trash. And 95% of crypto is trash. Something I have said in the past as well. It is. And a lot of people who were moving billions invested a lot of money in also just generated more trash, more trash assets, you know, and that's the big, big problem I see at the moment. And of course, when the market crashed, the regulator will come and say, I'm here as a hero to change everything, to make your money safe, whatever they are going to tell us. And those remaining retailers will celebrate them. But in my opinion, regulation only will not fix every problems we have right now. Because the problems we have right now is a system problem created by toxic market actors. And Sam is not the only one. The whole system, the whole empire he founded was based on what we know today. Speculations, risk, risky trades and business. And yeah, it ended very, very bad. But we still have a lot of these people in the market yet. We still have them. So... Yeah, we need to see. I, I, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. But hey, use case, business case are the keys. Buy those projects. Only those. I have some really shit coins in my portfolio. I know. Like a venture capital, you know, you invest in 10 different tokens. One, maybe two will be the token. Eight of them, yeah, that's risky investment. You know, I will trash them. I will, I don't know, maybe uh, maintain there in my MetaMask and every time when I have a good day, I will take a look to my MetaMask wallet then <laughs> just to see how much money I have burned. Also burned. Because, you know, I have also did some, some risky uh, investments, but that's part of the game. The main key here is to have always in mind that's risky what we are doing. We are the pioneers. I told you so many times. And pioneers means you don't know what's going to happen next. It's a risky game what we are, ga uh, we are playing. But however, I'm absolutely convinced that's nothing. I'm absolutely convinced that crypto will stay, it will be different, a lot of things will change, also the market actors will change. We know that Fidelity and Citable are working on an exchange and some others as well. Less competition for them, I would say. Well, let us start and talk about what could happen next. I'm still convinced the market will go down. Um, in my opinion, SPY, SPX are holding just too well at the moment. It doesn't matter. It seems they are ignoring every kind of information. And even if the data is bearish, they try to generate a bullish, a bullish version of the story. Something you can do that for a while, but you will fail and the impact will be even bigger. But it is what it is, right? So let us talk about what's happening to the market. I mean, many of them and many of you know, I have tweeted um, the wealth ratio 30 days moving average today. 
So indicating here that uh, even it declined a little bit, it's just too high. It maintains 50, that's the 30 days moving average, that's just too high. Indicating that, you know, uh, whales are still sending bitcoins and bitcoins to centralized exchanges. So related to the whales ratio one, one hour time frame, for example, that's something that's really, it's, I mean, if we check that part here, it looks extremely strange. I, I, I have checked if that happened in the past because, and I can't, I can't find such a sequence where the waste ratio one time, one hour time frame starts to decline, goes up a little bit, but decline even more. It's my own interpretation, but that looks a little bit like they are looking for liquidity. They they won't let the price go up, but it doesn't go up. Um, and as soon they start to sell once again, the price starts to go down. Even we still have a nice volume, so it's it's not the fact that nobody is buying. But I don't know who is buying. Uh, I was checking, uh, for example, just um, here, um, trading light in showing that they use, for example, different orders on different levels to keep the price up. The question is, who is who is doing it? You know, something I, I can't tell you. I don't know. In my opinion, those who are still trying to survive. Who is that? Well mainly exchanges and maybe also some hedge funds, some institutionals where if the whole market collapse, for example, Grayscale, micro strategy, they will have a big, big problem, a big problem. Mainly, I mean, micro strategy, I don't know how much money they are making with their IT services, but <laughs> it's, I think, peanuts compared to what they have uh, related to Bitcoin. So if if Bitcoin price crash, bye bye micro strategy. And well, many others like, uh, for example, as well, uh, Grayscale. Oh, we will see. We really will see. What we can see is that the waste ratio 30 hours moving average dumped and a level that we didn't see such a long, long time. So uh, close to 65 and now it's lifting up a bit at the moment at 70, not indicating that weights are sending more Bitcoins at the moment. But as mentioned, it's really strange what they are doing. So it looks like a little bit they are just, you know, come, go up, go up a little bit so I can sell, but I, I really don't know. Uh, what we see here, finally, that the um, stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges are de is declining and today it dumped, indicating they are taking out stablecoins from centralized exchanges. At the same time, well, I mean, stablecoin supply, I checked once again today. I don't really know. I I didn't find anything about CryptoQuant and what their stablecoin supply is showing, to be honest, because I have checked Tether, I have checked BUSDC, I have checked... I don't see that big in, you know, uh, new supply related to stablecoin, so I, I, I don't know. I really don't know where this um, money is coming from. So, um, yeah, that's it here. Let us go forward. So what we see here, for example, um, they, we, we are receiving right now some stable coins, but also nothing big. We received here once again, almost 4,000 Bitcoins, just close before the price started to go up and few hours before another 2,200 Bitcoins. So it's, it's, it's not low at all. So it's indicating they, they want really, you know, 
they want to dump as much as they can, we will take a look to the market maker entities because uh, it bounced a little bit. But we will check later on. I'm not going to uh, teaser now uh, anything, so we will check. But and of course, I mean we can see also stablecoins outflow 120 million here, another 170 million here. While at the same time we can see here, oh no, 78. Yeah, that that's right. And right now 100 million in stablecoins coming in. But you know. Uh, like here 140 uh, outflows here for example 3700 bitcoins and another 2000 bitcoins here so we still have a positive gap indicating more bitcoins coming in than outflowing at the moment at least well let us go forward so related to future market I mean we started um, six days ago uh, where the funding rate started to lift up and you can see where we are I mean in my opinion we are collecting longs 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 open interest right now lifting up a little bit so recovering and leverage ratio well what should I say so um yeah no no nothing has changed really so people are absolutely convinced that's it from here only up if we check for example stablecoin uh, flow activity related to derivatives nothing really nothing absolutely flat only bitcoins related to derivative exchanges uh, still well intact if you can see, I mean, we have here 2,400 Bitcoins, another 3,300, here another 3,900. Um, we had here a bigger, also very interesting, because if we check the leverage ratio, uh, someone was, even it was maybe a really, yeah, I would say quick operation, but if we check the funding rate, leverage ratio, and if we check, for example, the outflows here, 11,200 Bitcoins. So someone did a very quick operation, it seems. Um, if we go forward, let us go and check the daily one. We see we had here this huge... Uh, short squeeze then the long squeeze wasn't that big anymore 10,000 bitcoins um yeah 17 so let us say 18,000 however we can see here that's the daily one open interest all exchanges whoop, down um then we see here that's the violet one funding rate hard down hard up and the leverage ratio declined, but at the moment it maintains here. I mean, we are talking about that level we had in September as well. But open interest, I mean, we had uh, a nice open interest in November at all-time high. And since then, it's just declining, 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 declining more. It has right now indicating a level of May 22nd. So when we had the crash last year, if we check Binance, for example, uh, Binance, I think it's the leader here, open interest, recovering, uh, funding rate. Oh, sorry. That's the leverage ratio. Leverage ratio is that here, right? No, it's the funding rate. Sorry. That's the funding rate. And that's the leverage ratio where we see it declined here, but it's now recovering even as usual quicker than the uh, open interest. If we check the blockchain whispers, we will see here as well that longs are coming hard and big. 1.4 billions against versus 643 millions. 
So longs on Bitfinex side decline, shorts are rising. Also very interesting. Um, yeah, 69 to 31, absolutely not healthy at all in my opinion, not under this current market conditions. Uh, let me see if I can spin. Come on. Oh, the Kingfisher. <sighs> so, uh, give me something blue, please. No, red. Okay, if that means I will get more money for my short, then that's fine. Um, so let us check what Binance is doing. If we can see something, I think we still have this huge short cluster. Yeah, we still have it. Still here, 20,300. So we can see that it starts here. We have a peak here and that's it. While on longs, it's here. It looks really similar. We have here the biggest long liquidation cluster and here the biggest a uh, short liquidation cluster. We have 50 million last liquidation position since yesterday. That's really huge. I don't know why. Um, so to liquidate this longs here, for example, we are talking about 41, 37. Yeah, so almost 100 million at 14,400. And we have, well, I don't know, 300, pff, that's a lot. I don't know how much that is. Oh, that that's not that much. Oh, someone closed the shorts, it seems. It looks... I uh, This one bar here has 40 millions. This bar here has even 42 millions. So indicating, even if it's... I don't know why, but... This cluster here is even bigger than this one. That looks, the illustration is not the best one. So that's it, let us go forward. So I have added some more exchanges and peers just to see uh, what's happening here, you know. I mean, we see, for example, BTC USDT, uh, they were distributing 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 even more right now just lifting up a little bit making you know i mean just purchasing a little bit but doesn't mean anything i mean it doesn't still doesn't look like big accumulation happening here the only thing was looking very bullish was stable coins with bitcoin collateral and stable coin collateral right now indicating they are shorting we need to see if that's if that's going to happen. So if we go forward, we see Bitfinex, BTC USD, and we see they were holding, holding, holding all the time. Right now, distributing. I can't tell you why they are not buying. At least the CBD looks very neutral at the moment. If we take a look to Kraken, and that's also the BTC USD, not stablecoin based. Uh, they were, you know, accumulated or both quick, distributed a little bit, accumulated even more, distributed hard, and right now doing exactly the same like Binance. But if you check these candles here, you see what these guys are doing. They sold very nice in a very nice price range. If they bought the dip, of course. Coinbase, BTC USD, they are distributing at the moment, so distributed all the time, accumulated, now distributing. The question is, will they start to distribute even more? We will we'll see. We have here Bybit, Bybit BTC USDT, so with Tether. They are distributing all the time. CBD looking very neutral at the moment, indicating... Mm, nothing big happening there and last but not least bitstamp with the BTC USD so once again without tether and uh, stablecoin we see they are accumulating 
I mean, 1,600 Bitcoins related to CBD, it's not that bad because, you know, uh, but however, we need to be extremely careful with that because if inst institutional are behind, they can just, you know, dump all these bags and then it's over. But, you know, we need to see. Um, at the moment, it looks more than um, more distribution than accumulation at the moment. If we take a look, for example, to our entities, retailers right now, it seems after the bank run, they are still increasing their balances, but cooling down. They are calming down, it seems. Also here, for example, these wallets with one to ten bitcoins. They are not rising anymore, so they are done. They did their bank run and that's it. We can see also these guys here, wallets with 10 to 100 Bitcoins. They did its bank run, it's over, so they are fine now. These guys here not doing anything. Usually these guys here buy the dip, sell up our level, let the price go down once again to buy the dip and so on and so forth. These guys are the traders, short term traders. And then we have market maker entities. What should I say? I mean, just just end of October, that's two weeks ago. They had a balance of four million eight hundred eighty thousand Bitcoins, the biggest entity, still the biggest entity. Right now, they have 4,630,000. So we are talking about 250,000 less Bitcoins. And they are still the biggest entity, still. But if they continue, I don't know. I don't think it's they will maintain this this level. And entities related to centralized exchanges lifting up, indicating, in my opinion, more Bitcoins coming into the centralized exchanges because we only have almost 100 entity, uh, yeah, 100 wallets related to this entity. And um, if you check Bitfinex, Coinbase, Binance, Gemini, Kraken, they are only. They are well represented in this entity here. I mean, the two biggest wallets related uh, to these entities are Binance and Bitfinex. So, yeah, um, I still have a gap here, data gap by CryptoQuant. I don't know why, but we received 1000 Bitcoins once again. And that's the thing. Um, I mean, it's it's nothing. It's peanuts. One thousand bitcoins, but they use one thousand bitcoins to sell on centralized exchanges while they are using OTC. And I guess they also just distributed this part, and I still distributing because that was really hardcore. That was uh, really a lot compared to what they usually send. I mean, we are talking here about almost 10,000 Bitcoins, another here uh, 2,000 Bitcoins, another 1,000 Bitcoins, ah, you know. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and let us go forward. So if we check, for example, here, we can see we received a lot of Bitcoins. Uh, so that's the inflow right now, the net flow indicating we are it's it flipped from red to green, indicating they are taking out bitcoins now from centralized exchanges. But after that big thing, you can see, so the bitcoin reserves on centralized exchanges declined a lot when we dumped, and afterwards we received a lot um, in few in just two days, and now it's declining. So usually I would expect. A bigger sell pressure soon. I was expecting it today because of the um, core retail sales and retail sales. Tomorrow we only have initial jobless claims and Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index and that's it. I don't know. I mean the market 
at the moment it looks Wall Street doesn't want to nuke it. Because just before they nuked every time because of any single interest rate change or even core retail or CPI or PPI and now like I close my eyes, I close my ears, I close everything. I don't want to hear anything. And that's usually something that it's not good at all. It's not a good signal. However, um, that's what's happening here. If we check miners not doing anything, OTCs, I guess, because of Genesis, extremely flat. So we have here, for example, a big activity related to centralized exchanges. So at the moment, the algos of different exchanges are trading mainly, much more than OTCs because OTCs are looking extremely flat at the moment. So I guess, you know, when they hear Genesis has problems with withdrawals and so on and so forth, then they know it's time to cool down a little bit. Yeah, that's that's it. Let us go forward. So we can see here Coinbase, as mentioned just before, removed sell orders to the you know upper price level still at 25k. Uh still intact the whole sandwich here. Uh, where they still wait. I mean, you can see what they did just before to think that the whole sandwich is here to protect. Who is telling you that this sandwich is not here just to buy? And they want to let the price go down like they did here. What is that? I mean, look that. I would be extremely careful to think that the whole sandwich is just here to protect the price. Just saying. So if we go to Deribit, that's perp, not happening anything. Uh, just for those who don't know, the next limitation would be at 15.5, but the biggest one at 15k by Coinbase. So 15k or 25k. Bitstamp. Bitstamp also here still waiting with the whole sandwich. The biggest one between 15k and 14,000. So we have a little limitation here at 19.8. Binance. Binance limiting the way up as you can see, but also the way down. The next wall would be at 16k. Otherwise at 18. So 16 and 18 we have a gap of 2,000. Right now below of the uh, main POC here. So I guess they want to push up once again to 16.8 and maintain and go up and go a little bit down. And I, I really don't know what they are waiting for. I really don't know what they are waiting for. But you see what they are doing. I mean 300, we have here an order and here a dynamic order. So it's changing all the time and just full under control. Bitfinex spot. Limiting the way down at 16.3 it seems and limiting the way up at 16.8 at the moment. At least waiting there. Another limitation at 59 and then they have also a little sandwich between 15.5 and 15. Okex spot, nothing, Kraken spot, also Kraken for example, waiting here at 17.2, 17.5, 18 and also a little sandwich between 15.6 and 15 and that's it. Bybit, nothing. Bitmax, Bitmax at least buying, yeah, but also here nothing. 
Binance Futures. Okay, a huge cluster between 16,400 and 16,000. So that's where I guess the price bounce as well and attracting the price to the upside, at least related to futures. Uh, you can see that they are waiting here at 89 and 20,000. So I don't know, potentially they want to let the price go up to short from there. I really don't know. I'm really tired of this market. Nothing happening here. Kraken Futures waiting at 16.7. OKEX Futures nothing. And well, OKEX Swap. Also here OKEX Swap indicating distribution maintains active. That's it. Let us go forward.